What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hate to Break It To You, World's on Fire Edition. I'm going to start right away by reacting to some videos, and who better to react to than myself? Now, something happened to me this weekend, and it was very interesting. I'm going to tell you about it. Because of social media, everyone has a voice. But let's just be honest, most people should be voiceless. You can clip that and send it to NBC. I don't care. A lot of people are NPCs. They're not well informed on many things. They're informed on White Claw, vaping, and having a big mouth. And, you know, unfortunately, if you watch Elton John or Adele, you're in awe. If you watch a football player, well, they're a little aggressive with athletes, but you're still in awe, but they can be aggressive. If you're watching... You know, Yo Yo Ma on the cello, you're highly respected. If you're watching the Joffrey Ballet, you're besmirched with bespecklement. But if you're watching a comedian, you feel a good comedian will make you feel like you're connected. A great comedian will make you feel like you're thinking. And maybe the best comedian will make you pissed off. But you should be pissed off at what they're telling you, not at them for delivering the message, the greatest title of a special ever. Chris Rock, don't shoot the messenger. Greatest title, obviously. Because he was delivering harsh truths. Don't be mad at him. And that's why he's one of our goats. And, you know, the art form, as you know, is always disrespected. But now, with the alcohol, with the key lime pie, with the social media... With the echo chambers of your Facebook group, people are emboldened. I can do that with your local Jamocal TikTokers selling out a fucking taco shop. I can do that. So even if they don't do that, the average audience member feels that, hey, they're funny because they made Tom in accounts receivable chuckle. It's the most disrespected form of all time. I can make a three-pointer at Staples. I've done it during rounds for a charity game. Doesn't mean I could do it against the fucking T-Wolves during garbage time. No, I made a shot. I was lucky. I can't make it a life, but that's, for some reason, comedy. You know, only the people that will really try it will respect it. Really try it. So with that being said, audience members just feel more and more. We're in a very electric time period. People say stuff, it's instant reaction, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I experienced the first thing that they, they talk about in the news, and I'm going to watch the video. So I didn't have a heckler at all. I was 56 minutes into my show. I usually do an hour, an hour four. Because in this audience, they already had three great comics. They had Dennis, who did eight. They had Jason do 15. They had Ryan do 10. That's 32 minutes, 33 minutes. And then I come on an hour or whatever and change. I got my first sponsor, my first legit sponsor. And it's underwear. And it's sheath. Sheath underwear. Now, I didn't take them out before. Now, these are really interesting underwear. First of all, they smell really good. I mean, they don't smell good. That was gay. Um... They do smell good, actually. They're soft. That's why I put on my face. They're soft underwear. They're naturally cool. Okay? They're called sheath underwear. They've got this cool logo on them. And then their whole gimmick is that you put your donger, you put your stuff there, and then this is a to-do. I mean, then you put your tube in there. I don't know if you can see that. So your donger rests your... Your uh, your your bits are in there, and your kibble is in there, and then it's literally like it. You know, it gives you a nice little a little extra uh, package there if you like that. If you're a person that wears jeans, and they got these cool colors, they're funky. And I'm gonna tell you something. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use my promo code. They, I don't sleep in underwear, man. I usually sleep buck because I have sheets like this. Even 
These are pretty soft. Like, I have bamboo sheets. These are pretty almost like them. That's pretty right on there. I, I would sleep on this if it was a sheet. And it's cool. Like, naturally cool. I like to sleep exactly. How, I don't like to wear underwear. I wore these to bed last night, and I didn't feel like they were cutting off my circulation. I fell asleep. Like, this isn't me being a hoe. This is me believing. I believe in these underwear. Like, um, we just started our partnership, you know. In order for them to be my sponsor, I got to get views, you know. And I think that there's a lot of things that we have to do. But it's like, the algorithm is tough. Um, but I love them. The brand, I haven't met the owner yet, but he's an upstart. It looks awesome. It's actually a very good product. You get a discount. You should try them. If you like underwear... If you like your package packaged up, um, I would try them, man. They're fucking good. They're really good. Like, I'm not going to do anything that I don't try. You know what I'm saying? So, try them. Do it. Sheathunderwear.com. And, and promo code Jamie. See, I yawned in the middle of that. You couldn't do that on TV because it doesn't matter. Everyone knows everyone's a liar, and I'm not lying. I damn near two hours. Plus, they're waiting before the show starts. It's Florida. It was a hot Saturday. You could get loopy. So I'm like, I'm not going to go past 60 minutes if I even get there because this crowd is great. They were hot, fucking fun, completely respectful, just looking at you with open eyes. And they were awesome. And laughing when they should laugh and you could see their faces. So I do this joke about Trump. And it's not even like, it's just a Trump observation. It's not... Pro Trump, it's not anti Trump. It just says Trump is funny. I'm not gonna do the joke because he says the most wildest shit at the most out wildest times, and it's just fucking so funny that this is the president or he used to be the president, right? So it's fucking funny, and I do examples and whatever. It's a simple premise. I'm working it out, but it still does pretty good, right? And then I just said, yeah, you know, and I say something else, whatever, and I just said, listen, when I see. I don't know. Then I said something about pink hair. And I said, when I see someone with that blue streak in their hair or that pink streak in their hair, that's when you got to run. Because, you know, you know, you got you to gotta run into something. Right? So I did it. But I did that. And people really laughed. I did the Trump stuff. And people were I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to suck my own day. But people were howling. It's getting better this bit. It's not there yet, but it's getting better. And they were howling. And this was like on an hour 50 in of the whole show, like I said, and they're fucking key lime pies and all stuffed. And I was like, this crowd is so good. I'm going to get off like right after this. I'm mean, like one more bit. It's about to go into my clothes or, you know, it's about to sing some Christmas shit. I'm kind of happy that I didn't have to. And all of a sudden, after all the laughter died down, I just heard, it's fucked up. It's fucked up! It's fucked up! <laughs> it's fucked up! It's not funny! Everybody's laughing! <laughs> and this, this woman, God bless her, she, I think not, some people said it was the pink hair joke, I think it was the Trump joke that people were laughing with, they're co-signing the joke with the laugh. Again, it's not one side or the other, it's just an observation. And she said, everyone's laughing! How are you laughing? It's so fucked up! And the next thing I know, the husband... His behind her. <laughs> he's like trying to, she's like, Mah. it's like, a, ah. like, dude, uh, for real, on, on, uh, yo, on, say word, it's on, like, you know, fucking real talk. So, and I was, so if this wasn't a heckle, imagine like a crowd is just watching and they go, ha, 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 and they go, ha, ha, the whole night. So I guess this joke or the other joke, something affected her and she started yelling. And then the husband's trying to calm her down. She was kind of a big kid, not crazy. He was a bigger kid, meaning like big, you know, I say the term kid. That's like a joke, but it's like, yo, thick kid. Um, and then her table and some... And she just got out. The owner was there or the, the the manager. And he's like, is everything okay? She's like, I can't take it. She's like, okay, calm down, man. Calm down. He's like, are you okay? Like, And he walked. He's like, and she was, he was talking to her. And, and then, of course, there's one guy in the audience, a Florida man. He's like, go to hell home. You can't take a damn joke. <laughs> I was like, 
And I was fucking speechless because she didn't heckle. She just had a, a visceral reaction to words. And I said, and it was, it wasn't a crazy joke. And I go, this is it. This is TDS. It's real. Trump derangement syndrome. This woman could not sit in the club anymore. She wasn't making noise at all. She wasn't loud or obnoxious. She wasn't disruptive. She, the whole crowd was quiet when they needed to be and laughed when they did. But when this joke hit, it hit a core in her and it triggered her. And she could not. She says, I cannot be quiet. And she started shouting. But she knew she had gone past the show etiquette. And so she tried to leave gracefully. And the husband was helping her. And the staff was just like, are you okay? Let's, you know, let's talk outside. We'll talk about it. And I don't know. Maybe she had a little sauce in her. I don't know. So look, everything's content. So obviously I made a video about it. And look, I, I wish I got to talk to her. I, I wish I, you know, if she sees this, I want nothing but the best for you. I'm not mad at you. It it was fascinating to me. She could have been on his Annie and it affected her, but she was pretty hyped up. Or maybe it was, you know, blood pressure medicine. Or maybe she had a couple of martinis. Or maybe she just was that triggered. I get triggered too, man. But I don't lose it in a, in a public space. I try not to. I mean, there have been times. But not like, you know, I know the certain rules of society. So, again, I'm not judging her. I'm just... So I want to watch this video because, first of all, this is where we're at, right? Like, usually you would just take your lumps, walk out, you know, and go, fuck that guy. Fuck him. Or leave early. No, she couldn't. It wasn't that she needed to say it. She couldn't. She didn't say it. It said her. Like, she, it was, these words just kept coming out of her. She was like, wow. Ah! Like she saw red. And so I want to play the video and I want to react to it. I'm going to show you something. Like, this is a blessing to do what I do. Like, I'm blessed. It is. I want to say, man, I'm appreciative of you. I love you. It's okay. I'm sorry, man. Sorry. No, I don't want to be like I know. Wow. I know. We're all talking about me. feel right there like she's really like she's really she's like I'm sorry she's sweet but she's like I, I can't I can't like she's like a remember the chicken lady chicken lady well I don't know where you're going chicken lady kids in the hall she was kind of getting chicken lady she was she felt she knew she was in she couldn't she shouldn't be doing it but she just couldn't hold it back that's wild but I mean I get it but she okay but but everyone was enjoying it and the fact that they enjoyed it made her more mad. And we're all talking about me. I'm sorry. 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 Now, if you notice, I didn't say anything. I waited till she left because I wanted to assess the situation properly. She wasn't mean. She wasn't angry. She just was triggered. So I didn't want to go after her. Oh, I know. We're all talking about you. A little paranoid. We're all talking about you. I'm sorry. 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 I'm it is a comedy show, ma'am. I mean, we are going to laugh because that was unprecedented. Homies out there trying to wrestle this fucking bull. <laughs> 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 That's a couple spurs you got to get. That's a couple. She was all wild. I didn't say anything until she was well out of the building. And I wouldn't talk shit about her. I was just talking about her reaction. <laughs> She's fucking, dude. That's Pamplona, dude. What did she get upset about? We're not sure. But he doesn't say very much. Okay. So that, that's the beginning of it. She goes, we're not sure. But he doesn't seem very compassionate about it. Now, the good news is all of the comments 
are uh, tons of people that have met me and you know really say wonderful things. But that lady, not who got triggered, but I think she was with her a friend or the two people that Ryan. Ryan's like, what'd you get mad about? <laughs> of course, he's doing his sleuth thing. And she's like, we're not sure. But he doesn't seem very compassionate about it. Right there. Hold on. This is a baby Karen in training. Compassionate about it. Let's go through the steps, okay? I could get ugly, but I'm going to try to keep it respectful. The, okay. Let's just talk technicalities. The woman had an uncomfortable reaction, left on her own and with the staff's accord and her husband's accord. And then I waited, waited, waited. I said, is she gone? They're like, she's in the parking lot. I'm like, are you sure? And she goes, yeah. And they go, yeah. And I go, okay. And I started talking about her. Did I go ugly? Go check the tape. Did I call her names? No. I described her. I said, only in Florida is a woman like, well, I don't. And the husband's like, mm -mm. it was so funny that this guy put his arm in her fucking mouth. It was fucking funny. Okay. Because it was like, he was like, oh, God, I, fuck, I got to control her. And she was like, bah, 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 like fucking buck and bronco. That's what I said. You could check the tapes. And that's funny. Okay, it was funny. The crowd laughed because she was. She was like a wild bull. Okay, so, but she goes, he doesn't seem to have much compassion. Okay, let's just break this down now without me losing my shit. Okay, much compassion. Lady, 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 I know your French tips. I'll give you a fucking comment when I see that you got your hair dyed. Oh, I love your streaks, girl. Is that a Jill Sander? Is that an Hermes Mini? Biatch! I know everything about you and more. Okay, I can make you feel like you're the most understood person around. Do you know why? Because it's what I do. I'm an observer of human fucking nature. That's why I can go to a restaurant and never have to talk and sit there for an hour and just watch people and break them down because I'm fascinated by the species. So to say that I'm not compassionate just as a person, terrible generalization, completely misread the room, so you're not a comedian, and also all the backups on my fucking comment section are like, I've met Jamie. Shit, I saw him at a Publix. He was so fucking cool. He took the time to talk to me. Like, I go out of my way. So you're just so off fucking base. Now, am I mad about it? No, but it just shows you... These are the enablers in society. Am I mad? I actually feel bad for the woman who's triggered, but let's go deeper, okay? This fucking baby Karen, here we fucking go. You're so off. He doesn't have much compassion. So am I, this is, this is why I'm reacting to this video, that that was the line that got me. That got me my own trigger. But what do I do? I come into my area, in my safe space, Okay, I don't go to Trader Joe's and have a meltdown. I come to my fucking area. I process it, okay, with all the shit going on in my life, and you don't even know the half of it. I'm sure you got a lot of shit in your life, too, but I'm going to tell you, I got a fuckload of shit, okay? So I take all of that. I take two fucking planes. I eat the oysters before I get on the fucking plane. I come back to L.A. I get stretched. I take a dump. I go to three fucking coffee shops, and I'm like, how am I going to react to this? Okay, and I process it. Then I come in my safe little area, and then I put it out on my channel for my people that think like me. I don't run to the fucking news. I just do it for my people. And so that is what we call controlled artistic sense. Okay? Okay? I'm not hurting anyone with it. The people that want to consume this will consume it. I'm not making it about me. It's the least narcissistic thing you can do. Okay? The least. But this woman, again, I'm not attacking her. I'm attacking the other woman for saying, not compassionate. Let's talk about what she did. And that's not about her. It's about you not really looking at the situation and using that, that dumb girl. Use that goddamn brain. Lady comes into a comedy show. I believe had VIP tickets. Those are more expensive. Has an amazing meal. Sits with a group of her friends. 
watches the whole show. This show's just about done. Has a visceral, wild reaction in her head that she then allows to come outside in a public space, cannot control herself in a public space, leaves, gets what the people told to have to leave. She left nicely, but she couldn't take it, had to leave, mumbling to herself, like, you know, like, if I did it, I'd be judged. Oh, Jamie Kennedy's on drugs. Jamie Kennedy was seen leaving a show, and he was mumbling to himself. You would shit all over us. You'd shit all over us. But Gail, from Accounts Receivable, oh, we got to be compassionate because it's Gail. <laughs> so then she fucking leaves. I wait because I don't want to hurt her feelings so she's gone so she can't hear me. And then I talk about the incident. Not about her. I don't talk about her appearance. That was fine. She was great. I didn't really see her, but she seemed like a nice person. I didn't talk about her. I just talked about the situation and how it was a shot. Like, I thought somebody was having a fucking seizure. Like, and Jason said, too. He's like, dude, I thought somebody swallowed their tongue. Like, I was going, he was ready to do fucking get a pencil. And, I mean, we didn't know. It was like, ah! It was all of a sudden, it was jarring, right? And I've done shows in Beirut. Check the tapes. I've done shows in Beirut. Do you understand what that is? I've done shows in Coop fucking Wait. I don't have any compassion. Biatch! Wait! It's, but it's also literally you're coming to a show to fucking watch people say things that... That's what it's literally designed for. This club is designed for two things. To sell you fucking amazing lobster and steak and hear jokes to make you laugh, to make you fart, and to make you think. And sometimes it's going to make you mad. But it's like literally going to a gym, watching somebody use a dumbbell, and they just curl it a certain way, and they go, I hate the way you curled it! Get out! Going to the hair salon and them using a tool in your hair. And they go, I can't take it. I can't take it. It's, it's literally I'm in the area, the designed area within society by the rules, by the laws, doing what is okay by the rules and by the laws. And somebody comes in to the church, low-key defiles it. I don't even blame her. She had a moment. Happens. It's not her. But then I, I... I am supposed to be Jesus Christ when I didn't even do anything. I was kind of apocalyptic. I wasn't Jesus, but I wasn't bad. I was like definitely one of the disciples. I was like, I hope she's okay. And then I made jokes because that's what we fucking do. But then she's like, well, he's not, he's not, he, he wasn't a compassionate lady. What, what, what the fuck are we at? Where the fuck? Oh, so, so you understand? Go to Go to Nordstrom's, try on the clothes, put on a 50-50 a blend, 50% cotton, 50% poly. Don't have a reaction, but think you do. I can't, I can't, I hate polyester, I hate it. Take it, throw it off the ground, have your husband in security walk you out, work the counter at it, be the checkout person, girl, make a joke, get the couple of the coworkers laugh, and have somebody come out and go, she wasn't very compassionate about that woman who threw the sweater on the ground. You came in and tried on the clothes. It's what we do here at Nordstrom's. Like, what, it's like going to a porn set and getting mad for somebody fingering somebody in the scene. It's what it is. It's going to Italy, ordering a plate of fucking Caco Pepe and go, is there olive oil in this? <laughs> How? It's literally, you're getting mad at the origin of the thing. And that's okay, because comedy can do that. But then you're getting mad at the jester, because he didn't. Roll out the red carpet for behavior that a fucking we learn in third grade that you gotta calm down. So actually, it's entitlement. Now I'm not gonna even blame the woman. She could have a, a condition. You're that entitled that you think that us disrespecting us, the entertainer, the person that you paid to see. Hopefully you paid and you weren't comped. But it wasn't many comps this weekend, and you're mad that through a show that 98% of the audience laughed at and it was almost done, it was almost two hours, to, the, the, not, not to suck my own D again, but the night before I got a standing ovation. Doesn't mean I, other, other people would hate me. Silver Lake would hate my, stand, my, my jokes. Doesn't matter. You're literally coming into a place where somebody does what they do and they do it well and everyone's loving it and then someone has an issue, which is okay, and then leaves in a non-professional way. It was very unprofessional, okay? Get a wrote a review. 
and then you're mad at me for not coddling them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the issue with society. Let's just finish the video. What did she get upset about? What was she about joke? I don't want anybody to do that. Just a fun fun, everybody just laughed. And made it, it just wasn't, wait, she goes, it just wasn't funny and everybody laughed. <laughs> what? See, I think this woman was at her table. So she's like, it just, like, like, lady, lady, you, if you're her friend, you got to separate it. Don't. Take your, I mean, unless you don't think the joke's funny, then that's okay. But don't, like, try to save face because it's your friend. If you like the joke and you thought, man, I don't know, my friend lost it. Be honest. But if you say, I just don't like it, that's fine. But there's more to come to this, okay? So, like, the, 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 it just wasn't funny. Everybody laughed. What? <laughs> Because people want to laugh. I want to help you laugh. Don't get offended. Don't get offended. Think before you get emotional. It's okay, man. I got nothing else left for you. And God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The greatest thing is this woman who's like a baby Karen, looks like a teacher, tells Ryan Joseph, who killed? Who's hilarious? Who's original as fuck? Who's demented mind? He is like if Stephen Wright went to Chernobyl. That is Ryan fucking Joseph, okay? He is fucking neurotic. He's crazy. He fucking can't hold a job for more than a week. But he will murder on stage. He will get everyone's attention. And he fucking, she goes, but you were good though. This dude is the most darkest fucking fucked up comedian. And he kills, but, you know, he says jokes about racism, about gender, about geopolitics, about fucking sex crimes. I'm not going to do them for you. They're fucking funny, but part of their funny is because how did he come up with that? Another thing is like, oh, fuck, that's fucked up. You know, like, okay. So there's things that if 98% of people, as much as I want to say I'm edgy, I'm mild compared to Ryan, okay? And Jason isn't exactly a fucking family comic either. He's up there talking about doing a joke about Epstein's Island. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a dick pic. Somehow they came together in a joke. I don't know. So, and he was killing too. So, it's like, but you did good though. Yeah, he did do good, but you can't give, he was as dark as midnight. <laughs> but I'm, I'm the fucking monster. Okay? That's why I reacted to that video because I'm just laughing. Look. Here's what I want to say. The lack of accountability in our world is insane. I'm sorry that that woman had an off night. I'm not even mad about it. I'm just making content, but I'm also just pointing out how how our world is so fucked because of people like that lady in the bush who's like, he just, yeah, I mean, yeah. Not like, yeah, my friend should have been an adult woman. She's probably clearly in her mid-50s, and she's lived a long time. She knows how to act in public and how to act in private. Um, you know, because I won't get that fucking luxury, man. I can't even go to a fucking Wendy's, and if I say some shit, somebody will take me and send it to TMZ. It's happened a fuckload. Go Google me with TMZ, okay? So I can't fucking afford you that luxury. And my life is more invasive than yours, unless that was fucking Adele in the bush. I don't know. Or somebody that is always has the cameras around them or whatever. Not that it happens to me, but it definitely happens. Like, are we at the place where we have to put a sign up? I think some clubs do this. They're going to say, what you're going to hear, it may be triggering to some. So enter at your own risk. By entering these premises, you know that these are jokes and this is comedy. No one will be physically hurt, but you might emotionally be affected. Like, is that where we're at? Like, going to the gym, people may grunt and you may have see people sweat. 
Are you okay with that? I mean, it's literally what you can't control. It's the byproduct of a joke is a laugh or a groan or a shock. But you're in the dojo. The byproduct of lifting weights is you sweat and you grunt. I guess you could leave, you know, like the atmosphere, but I don't know. Um, that's what I'm trying to say is you have to be able to do what you do. And if it's a sold out show and most people are laughing, you have to read the room and go, maybe I'm being sensitive and that's okay. But maybe if that person's afraid that they don't have to worry about it, which I get, it's the friend who's like, it was just, he wasn't just compassionate. Like I'm supposed to just go, I'm sorry, baby, boo, boo, bear, bear. Everybody else is here, but let me help you. Don't you think that's narcissistic? And if someone has a mental condition, they shouldn't go to shows. I'm not I'm not being an asshole. Like I fucking go on roller coasters and it just fucks me up. I don't go on them. 